Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this little podcast, episode eight of Senior to Scratch. Once again, I do invite everybody to look at the show notes and click on my link for the YouTube channel because there are going to be a lot of neat visuals that you may want to look at. But if you don't have access to it, I will certainly try to describe them as best as I can. Well, it's uh, it's snowing again, and a lot. It snowed probably between six inches and nine inches last night, so the snow stuck. But luckily, I did get a couple of rounds in on this past weekend, so that's going to be the primary focus of this episode. But first, I wanted to start with a little story. Uh, I went to a club fitter the day before that first round in seven months. They put on a promo that expired before the end of April, so I made a booking on that last day possible, uh, which I said happened to be before my first round. And essentially what I was hoping to do was get my club lofts and lie angles checked and that sort of thing. After months of pounding on uh, mats, I figured, well, let's just get these checked. So I proceeded to hit some really quality six iron shots in the simulator, had these nice, what I thought were high, beautiful, tight draws carrying 190-ish yards. Then I got his diagnosis. He said, well, you probably won't get to scratch with these clubs, which are, by the way, they're two-year-old tailor-made P790s. So what he told me for various reasons of club design, the ball doesn't have enough enough height and it comes in too shallow of a descent angle to hold firm greens. So I spent the next, you know, one and a half to two hours testing different shafts and clubs. Really I had no intention of shelling out another at least a couple grand for another set of clubs. I may consider reshafting my current clubs to accommodate that extra descent angle that uh, that we're looking for, but I'm definitely not going to send them out for three weeks during our very short golf season. So I may do that at the end of the season. Now, maybe his negativity sort of sat in my subconscious during my round, but ultimately I think his job is to sell clubs and make commissions. So I don't think I let that bother me. Okay. So back to golf, uh, seven months of preparation, nutrition, fitness, simulator time, course management techniques, I mean, it was all shaping up to be an epic week of low scoring and well-played golf after a seven-month off-season. So we get up to the first tee, and there is this brutal hole, as far as I'm concerned. I'm left-handed. There's trees all along the left side of the tee box and well out into the fairway. I am a natural drawer of the ball, uh, typically, although I wasn't this past weekend. Uh, what you see here is a cone. So this is a Google Earth image of the golf course of that hole. This cone goes out to 285 yards, which is essentially you know, a driver distance. Uh, 260 is the next one, which would be my three wood, and then 235 for my hybrid. As you can see, like these, these are typical PGA Tour with dispersion. So even with the three wood or the three hybrid, it is going down into the gully potentially amongst the trees, or it's going into this set of trees a lot of the percentage of time, even with PGA Tour dispersion. So it is really one of my nemesis holes. That being said, I stepped up and I hit a very poor tee shot and I started it left and it kept going left and it ended up amongst the trees. So luckily, I was far enough behind the tree in front that I could hoist one over top. Now, it was, uh, let's say, probably about 160, 150, 160 yards to the green. And you can see how this green is extremely narrow and very deep. And from the angle I was at, it's a very difficult shot to get it onto the green, especially when you can't see the hole or the green because of the trees. I did hit a pretty good shot and it ended up in this pretty deep left side bunker from that point um, first bunker shot of the year no practice shots I got down in there 
you know, bent my legs, made sure my setup was good and took a big whack at the ball. And, you know, to my surprise, it actually ended up about three feet from the hole and I made the putt for a par. You could probably tell where this is going based on the title of the podcast. After that first par, I shot 15 over par on the next 17 holes on Saturday. On my Sunday round, I shot 11 over par total. My handicap went the wrong way. It went up 0.1 ticks to 5.2. I'll get into the stats in a little bit, but first a couple of observations slash excuses, I suppose. Going into the first, I was very keen on getting all of this data that I can share with uh, the podcast listeners and myself, frankly, to, to figure out the state of my game. So getting strokes gain calculated meant uh, quite a bit towards that goal, meaning needing to know where each shot finished, how far it went, uh, what type of shot was next, was there trouble, was there um, trees that I needed to punch out of that the the uh, app is just not going to know about. So I had to make mental notes or write notes on a piece of paper or on my app. I also had to mark pin positions to measure the length of all putts and whether uh, the putts that missed were long or short. In addition, I was going to use the uh, yardage books to determine aim points for the approach shots. And, and then finally use the Google Earth images to give me the proper aim point for my tee shots as I was showing you on the uh, hole one view. Top that with app problems not registering shots. So my Apple Watch wasn't registering shots properly. So I was having trouble figuring out what my distances were. I forgot my trusty rangefinder at home. So I really had no clue for distances. And, you know, I was fairly flustered early on. Add to that was the gusty winds and the 20 to 25 mile an hour range. And it started off fairly poorly in my head. So you probably see where all this is going. All this focus on stats, no focus on golf. Well, the rest of the round went fairly poorly, as I said earlier, with the plus 15 in the next 17 holes. I had four doubles in total. So here you can see one par three, two par threes, par five. Uh, the tee shot went over or out of bounds, I should say, potentially over the fence. I don't know. I think I just lost the ball. And then a par four. So I did not discriminate between my double bogeys here. You can see I had long stretches of bogeys off the bat. Um, I want to say I finished up <laughs> relatively strong on the last two holes, but by then it was pretty much done. Uh, this, what you're seeing here is from the Decade app that I purchased is pretty cool. Here's a stroke scan. You can toggle to get a quick heat map of where you need to improve or where you've done well. The first is off the tee, then the approach shots around the green and putting. And to no one's surprise, my approach to the green was very poor. And, you know, I attribute that to probably not practicing that enough on the range. I hit a lot in the simulator, but not a lot before the rounds. Um, off the tee was quite good. If you can see this, like I did hit, I think 62% of the fairways on on each round around the green you know, the numbers look decent but i wasn't happy with it at all in fact uh on that on the 10th par three i was in a green side bunker that i sculled over the green nearly hit the group on the 18th hole t box and uh, i did well to get a double bogey on that hole to pitch it back near the green and then get up and down from there uh, putting, you know, this putting stats don't look great, but I think my putting is greatly improving this year. And you'll see it when I show the, the second round stats. Now I'm going to talk about the second round. 
So this one, luckily, I remembered my rangefinder, got my app working. But this time I was really hungry before the round, so I ordered a nice juicy burger and some kettle chips. And it took a long time to get the meal. So the meal came out five minutes before the tea time. And I walk and I don't have a basket. So I'm trying to steer my cart up a steep hill to the first hole, uh, trying to chow down, getting grease all over my fingers. And uh, yeah, so I wasn't particularly mentally ready to hit that tee shot either. And to top it off, it was even windier than the previous day probably 30 mile per hour gusts and what's going on in my head where do I put my burger how do I get the grease off my fingers once again a bad mindset to start when I'm supposed to be focused on this toughest tee shot for me I'm going to briefly go through the first three holes so bear with me you've all seen the first hole layout these circles are from the from the first round so I'll just point to where I hit it on the second round I hit a very weak, almost missed the ball hybrid that probably went about 150 yards and ended up around here. Uh, maybe it didn't even go 150 yards because I think I had 230 yards uphill to this green. And so I take out my three wood and I really clobber it. But like, like I said before, it's a very narrow green, tough to hit. So I ended up somewhere here between the houses and the trees, but you can see there's a gap here. So uh, I was able to sort of just hit a low pitch, get it onto the green to 30 some feet, two putt for my bogey. Better than a double, right? Okay, I have to talk about the second hole because this was pretty up, down, and then back up again because here is the hole and once again you can see at my driver distance i could be in no man's land even with three wood distance I could be near this tree in these in this bunker so i go ahead and i hit a three hybrid and it is slightly downhill and it was downwind so i ended up hitting that three hybrid roughly 270 yards somewhere to this region right here my two playing partners uh, both ended up over the green, and it was a very back pin. And over the green, it's just down a slope, and then there's a cart path and some trees with some pine needles back there. Okay, so after my playing partners both hit over the green, I decide I'm going to hit a nice little knockdown 130-yard shot. Well, I must have caught it extremely thin and sort of sculled it, and it bounced in front of the green, kept rolling and over that slope that I was talking about six feet down and sure enough I'm in these pine cones pine needles back behind the green short-sighted you could give me a hundred balls and I would never be able to get up and down from here never have uh not that I've hit a hundred shots from here but never gone up and down especially with the back flag well in this case I sort of got lucky and I hit the pitch shot off this uh, hill and it took a lot of speed off it came over and it rolled down the other side of the hill and to about 12 feet uh, in front of the flag here and lucky enough I actually converted that 12 foot putt and made my par so I'm actually feeling pretty good about that all whirled up and down now the third hole is where my luck kind of started turning the other way. Uh, this is a, for me, a difficult uh, par five once again. It's got really deep bunkers lining the fairway here on the left. On the right are trees. It's no more than 30 yards, maybe 25 yards wide at my driver distance. A uh, little bit wider, three wood. Um, hybrid. You know, even wider, there's a chance to get in this left bunker, but that leaves you with almost no chance of going for the green in two. So what I decided to do for my strategy was hit a three wood and sort of aim it maybe down the right center of the fairway. Um, as I said, it was windy. The wind was coming in from the right on this hole. 
I did hit a blistering three wood drive and I hit it right on my target line, maybe a little bit left of it. It was just hitting down the center and, you know, I lost sight of it because my eyesight's not so good, but I kind of knew it wasn't, it wasn't going to end up well. So as I walked up, I realized, well, it's in this last bunker kind of right up against the lip of the bunker, which is fairly deep. Uh, I did hit it 285 yards, which was a plus, but the the minus was the next shot was going to go no more than 15 or 20 yards because I had to take my medicine, take out a, a lob wedge and just clear that lip of the bunker to get it right to here. So I'm, I'm here. It's, shouldn't be the end of the world. The green is, the green was about 160 ish, 170 yards away. There was water along the whole right hand side. So I ended up favoring the left and I ended up hitting it in the screen side bunker. So I'm sitting there in three, not the end of the world either. It would be a tough up and down for par. Well, what do I do? Just like the 10th hole on the first round, I ended up sculling it. It went over the over the green, over the bunker, over a rock wall, at least to the next tee box. And I had an impossible pitch shot coming up from about 35 yards over that rock wall, over the bunker, onto the very fast green. I did hit a pretty spectacular pitch shot to about seven feet, but I couldn't make the downhill seven footer. And that was a double bogey. And the next hole was a double bogey. And I'll show the scorecard next. So I obviously got a little bit flustered after the third hole, getting double there, double the next hole. Absolutely terrible tee shot on the long par three fifth. Um, hit a really good chip shot, missed that putt. So uh, ended up in the bunker on six, which is one of the more difficult lengthy uh, dogleg lefts. Salvaged my par on seven, got a pretty good bogey on eight considering where my tee shot ended up. And uh, we're on the ninth tee box. This is kind of a neat story, but <laughs> we're talking about this podcast and the guys were joking, well, maybe instead of senior to scratch, you should just call it senior, implying that I'm never going to get to scratch. And, uh, you know, once again, that ninth hole, even though it got a par, it was it was a struggle for par. I hit a tee shot that was probably close to 290, 300 yards and 50 yards to the pin. And my approach shot would not stop and it ended up at the back of the green where the pin was in the front. I had a 60 foot putt that I got to 10 feet short and I, another long putt that I happened to drain for par. So that might've been the catalyst for me to, to play a little bit better for the rest of the round. But as you can see on the back, um, I shot 38, even with a double bogey. So my, if my four nine hole, components were on Saturday 43 43 then on Sunday 44 and I was kind of getting discouraged and I did it end up with the 38 so I did I think I want to say that I finished up fairly well even though the the weather was quite cold if you look at the strokes gained once again the approach to the green was my red flag here on the front nine almost every hole I would have lost strokes off the tee did much better on the back, as you can see. Around the green, eh, not terrible, but there's some pretty big strokes lost here as well. Uh, on the greens, you know, as I described some of the long putts that I made, I actually did quite well relative to, say, uh, PGA standards from those same distances. So quite encouraged by the putting, and I'm going to continue to work on that because, as my playing partner said, well, that's one thing that's really a constant. You can practice on the range uh, hitting shots, but you'll never get a true uh, feel for, for what the course is going to be like doing that. But putting is putting. So what are some of my key takeaways from this past weekend? First, do the stats the heavy lifting for the stats after the round. Don't get distracted during the round. Um, um, secondly, 
flat simulator mats and no wind are not real world conditions. It is much different when you have the psychology of golfing on a real course. Um, so with that said, I really need to uh, block practice in my rain sessions. So pick one type of swing, try not to knock anything down, just gain some confidence in hitting with the appropriate amount of dispersion for each club. So those cones that you see will actually imitate real world conditions and, and my shot pattern. I need some bunker practice. I haven't sculled a ball out of a bunker in a long time before this year. And I had two in the first two rounds. Pitching practice will also be important, especially as the greens firm up. I was trying this lower trajectory chip and even though I felt that the shots were good, they just would not uh, stop. They would just keep running out. So I need to get a little bit more height and a little bit more stopping power on these pitches. So that's another thing I'll work on. But I do do feel good and I did feel good about the last 10 holes that I played at three over par, even considering the double bogey. So next time I'll talk about more about my progress and perhaps what I do this upcoming weekend if the snow is gone. Uh, and I will talk about the Tiger 5, just to wet your whistle a bit. It's kind of things that Tiger considered no-nos if he wanted to win tournaments he had to stay away from. So I'll show you what mine were and what Tiger's goal is. So you, I think you'll find this pretty interesting. So thank you for sitting through this uh relatively lengthy podcast and I can't wait to share progress with you on the next episode of Senior to Scratch.